name is Eleni Summershields. I am the Chief Operating Officer at Wise Agent. And today I am joined by Marcus Wiedauer, who is, okay, we've got a few titles here. So he's, tell me, tell me Marcus if I forget one, the, a realtor at Caldwell Banker Upchurch Realty, a development right. coordinator at Hill Point, and um, you also serve as um, in the House of Representatives for the state of Georgia. That is correct. Got anything? No, I think you got it covered. Got it covered. Okay, awesome. Well, welcome. Thanks for being here with me today. Thanks for having me. All right, everyone. So I see that we are live on Facebook. Awesome. If you guys want to um, go ahead and um, post in the chat what city and state that you guys are coming to us from and your brokerage, that'd be awesome. I always love seeing where everyone is coming from. We were just talking about traveling here and um, I love I love to travel. We love seeing where everyone is coming from. We were just talking about traveling Ooh. here. And, um, yeah. Myself talking. Is that okay? There we go. Um, so um, if everyone wants to post that in there, um, a couple of housekeeping things. So there's a Q&A section for you to post any questions that you have in there. And the lovely Sarah from our marketing team is um, on uh, the webinar. She will be answering any of your, those questions there. You could also post in the chat as well if you have any questions. I see some people from like Houston and Tennessee and Flagstaff and ooh, it's scrolling so fast, Scottsdale. So all over the country, um, awesome. San Diego will be there next week, awesome. Um, so um, go ahead and post in that. We are recording this webinar. So after the recording is completed, you will be getting uh, the recording sent to you in an email in your inbox. So watch out for that. Um, and today we're gonna be talking with Marcus about how he's juggling multiple, I would say businesses. I mean, you've got a couple of businesses and then being a politician is kind of a business, right? It, it definitely is. You got, <laughs> you got you got endless clients in that role. Yes, yeah, I'm sure, and that you have to serve them as best as you can for um, for everything that they're they're looking for you to do. That's right. And and today is election day, so if you guys haven't done your civic duty and voted, I already went and got my little sticker. So um, go ahead and vote if you have not done so. If you guys have. Um, I guess is everyone voting around the country? Uh, yeah, mostly it's local elections or like I think you had a uh, uh, an East boss or an educational tax. Yeah. Um, most things like that are probably going on. Um, yeah. Local races, mayors yeah. and whatnot. So, and it wasn't a coincidence that we had an elected official today on election day. I thought that was kind of a, a cool thing that it worked out with your schedule and everything. So thanks for, for being here. So. We're gonna be talking a little bit while everyone's just still popping in and um, posting questions and everything. We're gonna be talking about like, what you do. How do you manage all of that? I mean, you've got a few things going on in your life. That's pretty a busy thing to, to be in, um, just in real estate alone. And sure. then- Especially and then right now in real estate, uh, you yeah. know, the mar market being what it is uh, everywhere. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's obviously a challenge, um, but it's much like a lot of other people are doing. Um, they got a lot of different things going on. Uh, we live in a kind of a busy world, uh, all the technology at our fingertips and what have you. But no, I mean, I just, you know, it's obviously time management is, is the, the key element there. Um, but serving each one of those uh, roles, uh, you just got to be very diligent and uh, I take a lot of notes. I'm a list maker. Uh, you know, I like, I've, I've never minded somebody hand me a list, like a to-do list, because I, I would rather know all the things that I have to, you know, scratch off that list and kind of wonder, uh, wonder what I need to be doing. But um, no, I mean, it's time management's a, a huge role. Um, obviously, in each one of the facets, you just got to make sure you're wearing the right hat at the right time. Yeah. Um, you know, so do you do, do you do time blocking? I do time blocking. So, so yeah. Um, in fact, I think we, you know, we talked about this a little bit. I mean, I, I think that the concept that, that people are good multitaskers, I used to think I was a great multitasker, um, because I did, you know, juggle a lot of things and bounce around to different things throughout the day. But really, if you're being pulled from one thing, if, if, if politics is pulling at me and my mind's in real estate, then I'm not going to do either of those well. 
Yeah. Um, so time blocking is absolutely critical. And for me, that changes throughout the year, depending on, you know, if I'm in session, obviously my time block for, pol you know, politics is a lot larger during that period of time of the year. Um, it, so it just depends. But yeah, time blocking is critical. Um, like I said, I don't think you can you're wearing both hats, or, you're wearing two hats at once, you're, you're yeah. going to let something slip. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. That's, um, that that's happened to me. I've been guilty of that where I'm like, Oh, I'm great at multitasking. And then you do both things like 50%. You don't that's do right. anything at hundred percent. And so for me, what I do with like time blocking is I'll, you know, you know, I literally will just say, okay, this is where I'm going to read my emails are going to be done. You know, first thing in the morning, I, I usually read emails and then towards the middle of the day. And then again, at the end of the day, I can't be in my email all day long because then I'd never get anything else done. Yeah. And I'm big, especially when you start talking even in emails. I mean, I, I, I'm been accused of being rather OCD, uh, but but, uh, you know, with emails, I'll, I generally use my inbox. I mentioned I like list, to-do list. I use yeah. my inbox almost as my to-do list. Yeah. So if there's an email in there and I know it's something that I have got to get off the list, um, whereas if it's something I've addressed, obviously I'm going to keep or whatever the, the topic may be, I'm uh, kind of an obsessive filer. So I'll, I'll, I've got a bunch of files or uh, folders, if you will, in my, mm -hmm. you know, in my email to organize all that. Um, because if I don't, my email, I mean, depending on what's going on again, it, between politics and real estate, I, I, I mean, I could get literally thousands of emails in a day. Yeah. Um, so it just depends on what's going on. Yeah, you, you definitely get lost in the weeds on that. I know right. I do that too. I'll archive things. I don't, I don't necessarily, I used to file them in folders and I'm like I can't keep up with that I'm like what is yeah, this, no, this, this, this is, you know so now I just archive it um, and what I use is our um, our gmail conversations within wise agent where I can save everything under that person's name um, and so let me see if I can I can share my screen on that um, and that that would go under um, oh, oh that was me that was um, making all that sound. So what um, I would do is I would just come into my contact record here and then I would be able to see, oh, let me share my screen. That would help. And so any emails that I get from, this happens to be my daughter. And so any emails I get, it would just come in here. And so now I can just see um, whatever it is that I need to see here, I can open up, um, you know, her, the emails. So this was from, you know, her promotion. I can open this up. I could save this. And now everything is really filed away here. I don't ever delete emails. I archive them and then I can come in and see, um, see all these emails. So that's how I use that service, which is really nice. So I can kind of keep everything, um, filed properly. So. That's I, like that. I mean, it's because you can do that with you can do that with individual properties, but like I know, and I'm talking about me juggling different things. I mean, I literally can do that with specific topics. Yeah. Um, whether you know whatever the interest may be for a constituent, you know, I, I can I can bundle that into topic topics as well to be able to filter that. Yeah, and you can save like if there's an attachment in that email, you can save that attachment. So if you're going through a real estate transaction, you could save that to your checklist. You could save save that um, attachment just to that contact record, so you have everything there. You just have to keep you know contact you know all these contracts and everything for quite some time. And most states are about seven years, and so it's nice to have that where you just go into one central location. You don't have to go through your email. And like, is this the attachment? Is this, you know, and you have to open up a hundred emails to get to it. That drives me crazy. Um, I like, for me, I like, I'm, I'm obsessed with compulsive on a lot of things, but for me about organization and just not yeah. having to look for things that drives me crazy when I have to like dig around and click too many places. Well, that, I mean, that obviously just comes back to the efficiencies. And if you're yeah. not, if you're not being efficient, if you're not being organized, then you're, you're, you're losing minutes of the day. You're never getting back. Right. And when you're juggling a lot, the, every, every one of those matters. Yeah, most definitely. 
most definitely. So, um, so we were talking about emails and time blocking and, and everything else. So what are you, um, I mean, I know you and I've exchanged emails, so I know you have a couple of email signatures. So is that something that you kind of put all your titles in there? Maybe you can explain everyone how you use your, um, you know, your, um, your email branding and everything else. Sure. So I guess I'll just take a moment and like kind of expand. So obviously I'm a realtor with Cole Banker, um, you know, but my role with Hill Point is a little bit different. It, it, I do wear the hat as realtor for Hill Point site selection um, mostly, um, but I also kind of deal with some of the, the, the issues that we come up with as we're going through zoning matters and what have you. So I do try to keep it in its own bucket. And then of course, uh, you know, the, being an elected official, that's its, its own its yeah. own animal. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I, I kind of lost track of what, honestly, where you're, the, where I was going with that. <laughs> that's okay. uh, we were talking about email brandings and your email signature. Yeah, it's the signature. That's right. I'm sorry. So yeah. So depending, obviously, depending on, you know, what the topic is or which organization I'm, I'm representing at that point. Yeah. yeah I do have to toggle between that. Um, you know, and I, I, I try to keep that very clear because again, I mean, I, not to keep overusing it, but the whole wearing of hats. I mean, it's you know, it's very important to me that when I am acting in a legislative role, that that's the person I, I you know, that's the responsibility that I maintain. So yes, those signatures are, are, you know, appropriate to whatever that situation is. So whether it's Hill Point or Cobble Banker or uh, Georgia General Assembly, yeah, I'll toggle between those signatures between the signatures yeah I mean and you can uh, and you do that even within wise agent you can have when you're sending out an email for you know your real estate business you want to have you know your email branding that relates to that and then if you're sending something out you know based on any other things that you're doing um, I know like I do I'm, I used to be a soccer mom and now I'm the swim team mom so um, and I, I'm going to just shout it out because I'm so proud of our two of our kids not my children, but two of our kids on our swim team made states. So I'm excited for that. One of them being our CEO's son. So yay, wow. Gunner and Grace. So um, I had to shout out to them. Some people on this webinar know who they are. Um, but yeah, so even with your email branding, and I'll go back to that, you can have several different things. So you can have um, within Wise Agent. And I know some of you that are on the webinar right now, maybe you're, um, some of the, you had said that you're a loan officer and you're also a realtor, or maybe you're, um, you're an investor and you're doing, you know, or a landlord and have investment properties. And you want to maybe toggle between those, you know, when you're looking for, um, you know, when you're, you're doing any kind of prospecting. <clears throat> And you can do that through Wise Agent by just creating multiple email branding. So here's like our default branding with um, Rachel Green. And then you can also change that to have, you know, a different logo and, and still the same contact information, but then the logo would change. So then I can have it with like the Wise Agent email um, brand or the Wise Agent branding. So you can create multiple of these brandings to just really do whatever it is that you're you know, um, when you're sending out your messages, it's it's sending out with the, the appropriate signature and everything else. So for you, Marcus, you would change this from being like realtor to um, state legislator and then doing all these other things, right? Yeah, and having consistency there, I mean, I think is critical. I mean, everything, I mean, everything I do is branding is, you know, it doesn't matter if that's legislatively or not. And obviously, you know, my name is my brand, um, mm -hmm. whether that no matter what hat I'm wearing, um, but having kind of consistent, that consistent signature brand, depending on which hat you're wearing at the time, it's, it's, it's very helpful. Yeah, so true. And I mean, everyone really is, as realtors, I mean, you are your brand ambassador, you're going out, you're representing right. yourself. I mean, and a lot of realtors think that um, what they do is they sell houses, but really you're, you're selling your services and your expertise and your knowledge. And that's what people need to know and learn about you. So setting up an email branding, and I know like in our branding, you could even have, let me go back to my screen. Um, you could even add a YouTube video. So in every one of your um, emails that go out, you can have like a YouTube video linked to it that talks about what, you know, expertise that you bring and what you bring to the table as, um, as a realtor. So then they can really start to get to know you, especially when you're sending out those first emails, when you're just meeting somebody new. 
So that's one way of doing that, um, that I think is, um, would be to a lot of people's advantage. Um, and then you can do that for multiple things. So you can have one for like, if you're a lender, have what services you offer for that. And if you're a realtor, you know, whatever you're doing there. Um, and so one of the things that we talked about too is, you know, when you're, when you're, when you have multiple businesses is how you're going to keep track of your goals and being, you know, you've got to have some goals in life, obviously, but then also having them put down in paper or electronically. Um, so you can see those all the time. So you know what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve. Um, so I know the goal tracker is something that you also really um, utilize. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great feature. And it doesn't matter again, like if, uh, if I'm wearing, if I'm doing the real estate thing, obviously I'm planning for the year. Um, I deal mostly in commercial real estate. So, you know, transactions take a lot longer, obviously to get to the closing table. So you can forecast, you're forecasting those out a little bit further than you might be on the residential side of things, but still very important to obviously know, look, you know, if I'm trying to either get listings or acquire, you know, development property, you know, I need to know kind of exactly how many of those things I need to have um, so that I can make my goals at the end of the year, obviously on the commission side of things. But parallel to that, you know, unfortunately, uh, in today's political climate, um, you know, money, you know, money is important to be able to get your message out there because there's a lot of noise. Um, but just like real estate is we're, you know, some of us were in the real estate world uh, in 08 when it wasn't uh, the greatest of times, um, you know, right now, obviously, you see a lot of people that are realtors right now that probably won't be in four and five years if, you know, if this were to slow down. Um, so you gotta be able to, you gotta be able to forecast that and, and watch it very carefully. This is a, a, a great tool to be able to do that. But I, again, cutting through the noise, you have to unfortunately spend a decent amount of money on this stuff. So I actually am able to use the goal forecasting, even in, in raising money. Um, it's set up very similar. I mean, there, if a uh, constituents considered a client, if you will, um, you know, I know I have to call a certain number of those clients to, you know, bring in X number of dollars to meet my goal in a year. So I'm able to use the function, that function for both, both of those roles for really, uh, effectively. Yeah. And so, and the way we, we have our goal, um, setting, you can have it set at either monthly or weekly goals, and you can just put in anything in here. So if it's, you know, like fundraising, what do I have kept on? Kept on. So you can do, you know, um, you can do that and you can put in what your goal amount is, um, you know, that you need to raise, you know, X number of dollars and you can just put this in, um, you know, just a, a general type. Um, you could even, if you're working on a team, you can have some people be assigned to doing, you know, this type of goal for you as well. So um, that's something that you can do. And it's really easy to access on mobile. So then when you are doing something, so if you've got to do, you know, a couple of Popeyes in a week, then you can just go on mobile and just click on that when you're going through and doing anything else or, um, or sending out postcards. I love handwritten notes. I think those are, that's not done as often as it used to be. I mean, who doesn't love getting, you know, yeah. the hand, the handwritten stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll chime in on that for sure. The handwritten stuff is, uh, the things that people don't do anymore, uh, you know, handwritten anything, yeah. um, quite frankly. Um, and then uh, I, I, have a, I have a guilty pleasure. I start most of my mornings looking through Facebook and whatnot to see whose birthday it is. Because mm -hmm. uh, I actually, um, best I can, obviously I'm not, uh, every day doesn't happen, but uh, making personal phone calls to wish somebody a happy birthday. Um, mm. Little little personal touches like that obviously are going to set you apart from yeah. people that are just sending blanket emails or or what have you. So definitely the direct dial phone calls, the conversations are, are critical in building those relationships that are going to be ongoing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the phone calls, um, I know 
um, phone calls are really important. Text messages. I mean, people are, I mean, that's how we communicate nowadays. It's been, it's a lot different than what it was even 10 years ago. The text messaging is, is a really high impact form of communication. Um, so, and then email too. I know a lot of people that I've talked to recently are like, oh, is email still working? Is that still a thing? And it's absolutely, I mean, it's it absolutely absolute building. Absolutely. Um, obviously a great way, especially when you start talking about compiling all your clients in one, one database and being able to, to target those messages effectively is huge. Yeah. And so, I mean, and they, um, I think there's a statistic out there that you, it takes at least eight touches um, in order for you to start start building the relationship. It's not even that the relationship has even been built yet. It's you've right. got to talk to somebody at least eight different times um and i would say doing it in combination and conjunction with you know email phone calls texts all that stuff it shouldn't just be you know just one it shouldn't just be all email it should be yeah, a variation yeah, definitely not i mean it's you know the impressions right how many impressions are you going to make they talk about it in tv radio whether or not you're doing that on facebook um there's so many different impressions that somebody yeah, that has to be land on their ears before they're actually remembering your name, who you are. I mean, uh, name ID is huge, uh, is, is especially as an elected official. That is a that's a crucial thing. But if your name ID doesn't have a, a good name behind it, then it yeah. doesn't. Then none of it matters. Um, so they're both obviously very important. But no, the impressions take a while to you know before people start hearing your name. You know, we in polling, I yeah, I get data back on, you know, what is how many people even know who I am. Um, right. and it's really interesting because, you know, in a we represent just a little background with like a district like mine, I represent about 60,000 people. And you know, I might go to the grocery store and think I know everybody. Um, uh, but I can assure you in 60,000 people, I do not, you know, and, and those 60,000 people don't necessarily know me. So um, definitely the branding side of things or the impressions, uh, getting them, getting those touches in different formats, because you never know what's going to land on somebody's ear. Uh, yeah. Some people might look at a postcard and just toss it in the, toss it in the trash. But if it's handwritten, like you mentioned, um, I mean, that's, that, that's, that's going to turn their head a little bit. Yeah. Um, that takes, it just makes a much more powerful impact when you're getting something that you could clearly tell that it's been handwritten. And I know there's a lot of technologies out there right now that you can leverage um, to do the handwritten. I mean, there's just even fonts that you can just download because um, not all of them are compatible with every. I'll tell you, I'll tell you all secret. No, I mean, you can, I mean, there are programs out there where they literally, you get a sheet of paper and you have to write the letters, how you would write your letters, A, B, C, D, E, and then they'll actually, they'll actually change it into a font so that it looks as real as possible. You can still tell it's printed. Um, uh, you can definitely tell the difference, but uh, yeah, no, you can, you can try to fake it a little you bit. You can, you can. And I think, but I mean, I do think that like, just like good old fashioned pen and paper sometimes just makes a world of difference because it's what, um, what you're, what you're trying to, um, put out there. And sometimes, you know, that personal touch is what people really want and need, especially when they're going to go through a really large transaction with you. I mean, they want to know that you're going to be there and you're not going to be yeah. hidden behind, um, something else, but. Well, kind of tie, tie a couple of things we've talked about together, mm -hmm. like the goal tracking and the time blocking, you know, that's a, that's a great thing. Whether it's, whether you have time for 10 postcards or 20, um, you know, put that in your goal tracker, block it out in your time. You know, that's something, obviously, I, I one of the things I do is I don't sleep much. You know, I get, I get, so, you know, that's a great thing to do early in the morning when you can't make phone calls uh, or you get later into the evening and you don't want to bother somebody during dinner time. You know, those are, if, if you have the time and your schedule permits it, I mean, those are great time blocking uh, windows to, to do stuff like that. Be more effective in the things you can get done when you're, when you can't be on the phone. Yeah, absolutely. And so someone was asking, um, you know, how would this help? How, what we're talking about is going to help if they're um, I know Marcus, you're not really fine. I mean, I don't know, maybe you are, 
maybe you aren't, um, like you're not getting leads in. It's not like you get a list of people that would potentially vote for you or, um, or anything like that. And, and I don't know if you're, you're acquiring leads in any other way. Sometimes, yeah, mostly, and, and for me, I'm actually, yeah, on the real estate side of things, I'm definitely more on the acquisition side than I am on yeah. the listing side. Um, so as far as those leads go, not, not, I, don't, I don't deal with that as much. Um, as far as the, the political side, no, I mean, I, you know, you can, if you want to really get in the weeds, you can get a list of, you know, people that registered in your district, re district recently. Um, and kind of start targeting those people to find out if they, you know, to, to earn their support, earn their support, um, yeah. you know, but that's just like anything else in, in real estate. When you see people moving in the area, they're going to move again. And if you don't, if you don't, if you don't know who those people are, then you're going to kind of miss out on that opportunity to bring in those leads. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so the question was, you know, how does um, someone that's maybe acquiring leads, how do they, um, you know, segment that those leads or those contacts. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was our lead management and like our lead rules. So you can come in here and let's say you're buying leads from Zillow or any other portal, right? You can, you can automatically get these leads coming in and tag them, respond to them with a drip campaign. But then the tagging that category, categorization, I think is a really important thing where you'll be able to categorize them saying, you know, everyone that it comes in from whatever portal, I'm going to send them this monthly newsletter. Um, and then you could, of course, respond to them in an email or a text as well um, and do a bunch of other things. So I think that's really one way of doing it. The other way is if you're importing your contacts or you're just manually adding a contact into your, your database, you know, segmenting them and putting them in categories that make sense. Like, are these people that you're, you know, so I can come in here and just select a few people, right? Like, oh, okay, I know who Lois Lane is and I know who, um, you know, gosh, who are some of these people? Um, you know, and I know Brandon. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to add these people to, you know, they're my VIP, um, you know, buyers. So I'll add them to that category. And then um, these other people, and I can go through that list and just say, okay, now everybody else, and I don't remember who I selected before. So I'm just going to do random people here. Now I'm going to take these people and put them in a different category. Um, maybe I'll put these people in. Oops. Um, I gotta wear my glasses. I should wear these all the time really when I'm typing. Um, so, and then I can add them to that VIP category. And now I've started to segment my audience. And it's really important when you're doing that to do that. So then you can know who you're talking to when you're sending out an email or even when you're going through and making those phone calls, like, why did I put them in this category? Well, they're in the buyer's category because they're probably buying a property for me or interested in buying properties. So you know what the conversation would be be like, right? And where it would go from there. Wouldn't you say that, Marcus, as well? Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> and so hopefully that um that answers um your question. I think I don't I don't remember um his name that asked that, um, Roberto. So and then the other thing was just even going through and when you're on you know contact records. So we're on a swim person. I like swim. Um, so here's Michael Phelps. And so while I'm, you know, if I give him a call, then I can just open up my notes here and just start adding notes. And this is really important, no matter what business you're in, it, either real estate developer, loan officer, politician, um, you know, in, you know, in software sales, it doesn't matter. Putting in your notes on everybody is something that really everyone should be doing. That I think is is just massive in relationship building, mm -hmm. um, especially when you're dealing with hundreds of clients and what have you. I mean, you know, I don't care how good your memory is, you're not going to remember every detail of what's been going on in their life or whatever. And I take notes. Uh, I am obsessed with notes as I talk with folks so that I know the next time we talk, you know, Hey, how was your mom? You know, or whatever, whatever topic we talked about to have a to have a good concept of of the things they want. I mean, obviously, and you're trying to buy, you know, find somebody a house. Those those no, those kind of notes are obviously very important. But yeah. just the personal notes, 
so that you can build those relationships so that people, you know, don't just use you one time for a sale. Right. You, know, you actually build a relationship with them over a period of time and continue to get their business. Exactly. I mean, I take, you know, I, I'm a big note taker and I love like the minor little details because everyone leaves those little details, those little breadcrumbs of, you know, things that kind of most people just kind of don't recall, don't remember. It's just kind of like, oh, you know, it's just like an aside conversation. I was talking to someone not too long ago and, you know, I chew gum. I'm a gum chewer. I love chewing gum and I only chew one brand of gum. And she took notice and, you know, just dropped by my office and, you know, left me a pack of gum because she just thought of me. And that, you know, it's such a simple little thing, but really, I'm not going to forget that person. Um, I just know that that person cares about me and thinks about me. And that was really just like a random thing. But how are you going to remember what everyone's little minor details are if you don't put them in your notes? So that's something that's really important to put in there, you know, put anything in there. Um, now it's a fantastic tool and definitely, definitely need to <laughs> use that as much as humanly possible for sure. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And so um, when, you know, one of the questions that we had is, um, you know, how do you, um, how do you separate what email campaigns and, and, you know, you're doing for different people. And I think that's one of the ways is doing using the categories. And then also, if you're taking notes on people, you should be putting them. So like, looking here at Michael Phelps. So I, he's in a lot of categories. He has a new cat and he's a buyer and he's an executive and he likes to garden. Gosh, what doesn't Michael like to do? Right. So he loves jewelry. <laughs> um, so perfect. So now you know certain things about him and now you can be um, segmenting your audience and, and making sure that that message that you're sending him is appropriate to him. It just would be kind of really, you know, crummy to send him something that, you know, um, sending him a message about something that he's not interested in reading would just be, would fall on deaf ears. He definitely prefers gold medals. Than, uh, <laughs> exactly. That's why he loves jewelry. And jewelry loving. Yeah, that's, uh, that was, <laughs> I, I, I love jewelry too. So yay, Michael. That's, I knew there was another reason why I liked him. So, <laughs> and so how you would send out emails um, through Wise Agent is just going from this top of the menu bar here on emails and then, you know, putting in your subject line. And one thing I always talk about is leveraging our RSS feed. This is my, one of my favorite tools because there's things that I love and I know people that are, have the same interests in me, like um, I don't have one for jewelry. I should look for a blog on jewelry. So I love to garden. I'm not really good at it. Um, I only have like one thing in my garden bed right now because I've not been home to do anything else. But um, but I love to garden. And so really um, subscribing to an RSS feed or a blog that talks about certain things um, in real estate, keeping current matters is a great one because they have such great articles that they write every single day. They're updated every day. Like this one was from 3.30 this morning. Um, so you can subscribe to these blogs. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, so here's one, you know, Southern Hospitality. Um, and so what you could do like Christmas, they already have Christmas up. Um, so we'll do this one. And so I can just click on this and know that all the people that are getting ready to you know, start decorating, decorating their house for Christmas, I could send them this article just saying, hey, I read this the other day, thought of you, here you go. And so now you can send them something that you really didn't write, but you thought of them because you took that time beforehand to put them in that category of, you know, they love doing home decor, whatever it is. And you took that time to make note of that so then you could um, send them a message like this. And that's what people really like. They don't always want to be marketed to, right? Or sold to. You now, and I think uh, I, 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 that's a fantastic idea. And I think to digress a second with the email, I, for somebody who, from somebody who gets an alarming number of emails, don't, don't underestimate the uh, importance of the subject line. Um, because when you get as many emails as I get, that is that becomes very important. Um, so 
you know, it, it's easy to kind of throw something there pretty generic, but, you know, something that might catch their eye, something that, you know, like you just said, that example you just gave, you know, you could literally put in the subject line, you know, just something I thought about with you, you know, or, yeah. you know, something that, that is going to set it aside from being just a generic, you know, email. Uh, Cause if, if they're panning through, if they're panning through subject lines, you want it to catch their eye and you want them to click on it. Yeah. I mean, and I know um, we've written so many blogs on the subject lines and there's a couple of questions coming in about how I got to this RSS feed. So I'm going to go back because I am, fortunately for all of you, I'm not one of the trainers. So our training team does way better of a job than what I do here on this webinar. So um, from the email contacts page, what you do is you just click on this RSS button and you would have to subscribe. I scrolled through, I'm a scroller. Um, I just subscribe to certain blogs. So there's, um, oh, here's one college football. So Marcus, I would send, oh wait, you said basketball, shoot. Yeah, we're in the south. College football is king in the south. I just happen okay. to be a big. I just happen to be a big basketball guy. Okay, so um, so I have you know so poker news and renovations and whiskey and gardening and so I just went out and I just did a Google search for like RSS feeds on and then whatever the you know gardening or um, poker or whatever it is and so no you have to know what your um, what your database, what the people that you talk to generally, what their interests are. So, you know, these are people that you, you know, you know through your kids' schools or, you know, or you know them through the arts or you know them through sports or whatever it is. Um, subscribe to those feeds. You don't really need to know anything about the topic. I don't know anything about college football, but I could kind of like, oh, I read this article and I thought of you. And so then I just would um, select that article and then, you know, send it out to the appropriate people. So it's really important to making, sh making sure that um, you're sending that out. Because if someone were to send me something on college football, I mean, that would just fall flat on me. I, would, I wouldn't know what to do with that. I'd be like, cool. <laughs> All righty. I mean, at least somebody tried. Um, but, you know, if you're, <laughs> but like if you're sending me gardening or jewelry or whatever else I talk about here, um, you know, then, then that will resonate with me. And I'll read that a hundred percent of the time and not just read it, but if it's a really good article, I'm going to send it to the people that I know that have that same interest and say, Hey, I just got this article and I just forward it. Like, Hey, you got to read this. You know, did you know that you could, you know, garden in Arizona in December even, and then, you know, send that off. And now the person that sent it, let's say Marcus sent that to me. Now Marcus's name is going out to the people in my sphere through me. So that's how you grow your sphere a lot of times. But we were talking about subject, email subject lines, which the RSS feed does insert the subject line for you too. So, um, you know, but making sure that, I don't know why it would say it's Saturday 267, but you could, you know, home style for, you know, Christmas um, or for the holiday season. I would probably put that. And I would probably even put in a placeholder. So I would put their first name in here. So somewhere I would just say like, um, I would just put in their first name and be like, you know, check out this home cell for the holiday season. So that's, you know, so now it will go out and say, Marcus, check this out, you know, for the holiday season. And now they're going to read it. It's personalized to them. Um, and it has something they're going to know what it has in here. It's obviously about styling your home for the holidays. And they're going to either, you know, read it just because their name is in it, even if the topic is of not, in, not of interest to them. Right, Marcus, you would read this, even though you're not into Christmas type I would, reading. I, I, I would devour it. It'd be great. <laughs> and so then, um, so you kind of, you, you get the message across a lot better, especially if it's personalized to them because they're going to read that. Um, so that's that's a great way of doing it. And then obviously you would go in here and find, you know, people that are interested in whatever it is. So you would find all the, you know, gardeners or decorators in your thing. And then the email goes out completely branded with the image and the links to that um, 
to that post. So hopefully that answers um, those questions. So you just dragged and dropped the command for the first time. Yes, Lynn, so that's all I did was I just, um, I actually didn't even drag and drop. So what I did, let me just delete this. I just clicked on, I chose, so I, you could add the first name and their spouse's first name in here, or I can just put in their first name only and then put in the subject line. So, um, so that's how that would be used um, in, in your email contacts. All right. Um, okay. What else were we going to talk about, Marcus? Um, a couple of things that, um, do you cross promote your, um, what you do? Like, so do you cross promote whatever it is that you're doing for real estate into your, um, you know, political so, life? Do you do, um, you do any of that? I guess a little bit. I mean, again, in a, um, so I'm in Watkinsville, Georgia, just south of Athens. Uh, you know, obviously it's a, a small, small-ish community. Um, so there's no way I can't cross over. I mean, everybody knows I'm in real estate and you know, that's just, so do I specifically target it? No, I think what, would, what happens probably more is I talk about what I do for a profession while I'm in politics is that is probably more what happens because, um, you know, we're a citizen legislature. We, uh, we get paid $17,000 a year. It's not like you're, you're, you're doing this. This role is not, uh, it's not DC. It's not, uh, you're not getting paid the high dollars or anything like that. Um, so it's still very much, you know, you got to know the people in your community and they got to know what you do and what you stand for. Um, so more, I probably talk about what I deal with in real estate um, while in politics and how they kind of correlate. Um, you know, for the residential agents out there, I, I always I talk about how it's very similar where you got two parties, uh, but they got one bucket of money and you got to make them both happy on how you spend it. Um, so, you know, trying to get a couple to agree on that. I used to, I was also, I built houses for, for 20 years custom and custom work is, uh, is interesting uh, because one day, you know, the, you know, you, you've crossed over into a trust category when they start arguing in front of you. Um, you know, the, your agents probably feel, the agents probably feel that way when you've driven a couple to a house for the 50th time. And one of them's, one of them falls in love and one of them doesn't. Um, so, you know, it, it, it prepares you for that sort of thing. So I tend to talk about what real estate has done for me to kind of prepare me in my political world more than I talk about, you know, I keep my politics out of real estate, right? Um, yeah. That's, I, and, that's a different hat. And I think even as a realtor, I mean, you should be, you know, a member of the community, you are serving that community, you're bringing in new people to live there, right? Absolutely. And, no, and, so, and, and, and really, to be a com community ambassador. Right. For, uh, I mean, because that's if, if, if you think about it, I mean, if you're not genuine, people are going to see through it. And yeah. if you don't think that the community that you're living in is a great place to live, then how are you actually going to sell that community to somebody else, right. right? So it's, you know, I and I would say I probably ended up in in this role partially because of that, because I was so involved in, I mean, obviously, if you're not involved in the community, people don't know who you are. So that was definitely my trajectory. I'm not a poli-sci guy. I was a landscape architect in college, you know? Uh, so I came out right into the real estate world in development and civil engineering and you know, that's definitely where I started and met people, right? That's yeah. through, um, you know, yeah, being involved in real estate. I mean, uh, you know, my, our broker is one of the biggest people to do, uh, you know, community barbecues and giving back and coat drives and, and stuff like that. If, if as realtors, I mean, I think you're dead on with, 
we we are representatives of our community. We're bringing people to our communities. We're not just moving people around our community. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, because so, you, I mean, you have to be in, you know, you have to be a part of it. Be become a part of the Chamber of Commerce, and oh, yeah. um, you know, and be in, as involved as possible because that's where you're going to get to know, you know, who's, you know, who you're serving and how you can, you know, get people to move there as well. If they're coming in from other, other areas, you want to be able to sell that location as well and know what's happening. Have a, yeah. And that's, help. yeah. I mean, it's rotary clubs. It's, uh, you know, regardless of what it's PTOs. I was the, I was the vice president of fundraising for a PT for a, for a school for seven years, you know, and just raise money for the school. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing to get involved, uh, to get to, I mean, that's quite frankly, a great opportunity to meet new people that are coming into a community. Um, maybe a little late to sell them a house at that point, but uh, you know, you know who they are when they're coming in because their, their kids are new to school and what have you. Now, I mean, you, if you're not plugged in, in as many civic organizations as you can, and obviously find your love, right? right. Um, there's something out there for everybody. I, I tend, you know, my Rotary Club is very, very active and it's, it's one of my favorite civic organizations that I'm part of. Um, but yeah, you got to get dialed in with, with those kind of organizations to, to really be part of the community. Yeah. And we, I had, um, Jay Schlum, who was the former mayor. You're not the first politician to be on here, Marcus. I'm there, sorry. There you go. Yeah, You're not. You go. I had, um, Jay Schlum, who was the former mayor of Fountain Hills, the town where I live in. And, um, you know, he's a big part of the Rotary Club here and a big advocate for, um, you know, even though his kids are grown and out of the school system here, he still is very much involved in the schools and involved in the community. It's something that really does make a huge difference. You get to meet a lot of new people. And again, that's how you grow your sphere from, you know, you meet one person who knows three people and, you know, so on and so forth. So it's a great way of, you know, and building community. and you become part of the community builder um, yeah, as well. There's no I mean, there's no question. And when you're doing that, I mean, it, it, it pays dividends down the road that you might not, might not even realize. I never, I, I never dreamed that I was going to be in politics. Uh, it was never on my radar. I never thought about it that way, but became so involved in the community that some people came to me and said, look, you know, we need somebody to step up kind of thing. So yeah, it's a, uh, you know, it's, it's a great way to meet people, um, but you got to get out there and get your name in front of yeah. any organization you can. Yeah, that's so true. So now do you, um, do you have a, an assistant? Do you have an admin? Do you have somebody that helps you with some of these things that you're, that you do? <laughs> um, ironically, ironically, the least amount of help I have is in the legislative role. Um, so um, yes, with Hill Point, I have somebody that helps me there. And then in uh, Caldwell Banker, I have somebody that helps me there. Um, we actually, eight legislators share one admin uh, mm -hmm. at the Georgia State Capitol. So a lot of that um, you know, falls on me. And uh, well, all of it falls on me, unless I'm fortunate enough to have an intern, which uh, I've had a few here and there. But uh, um, you know, it's it's tough to juggle and I think what obviously there are a lot of great teams that have been built in real estate I've you know I've worked with a ton of great teams where you know maybe you're the lead lead guy but everybody behind you is the one that's that's propping you up doing all the doing all the heavy lifting um you know it's it's hard to when you're talking about branding and how you know your name is only as good I mean yeah. As soon as your name goes bad, then you know, that's a tough one. It's been a tough one for me to uh, fill that role and be very uh, comfortable <laughs> handing mm -hmm. off stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, but no, I mean, you have to have help. You have to have people to know all, all the stresses you're dealing with and how you can, can delegate those things uh, effectively. Right. And that's the, that's the key is how to delegate it and get people to, um, yeah you know, get things done for you in, in the way that will still keep your name and re reputation at a high standard as well. I know um, I work with a, a 
fantastic team here that um, Sarah's on um, on this on this webinar with us doing all the typing and everything else frantically typing out there. I, I, I can sense it and I always appreciate her, but that's something that is definitely how it does help in everything that you do, especially when you have all these multiple ventures that you're in, having um, people be part of your team to help you, you know, kind of keep moving forward in things and, and then also keeping that name. And so that goes back to even the email branding where you can still have, um, you know, your branding for, you know, the, an admin or an assistant or whoever on your team and still keep your name on there and your, you know, like maybe like a group picture that you would have in there and, and keep, um, keep kind of everything consistent. And I think that's another thing is keeping all of your branding consistent. Um, yeah, consistency is, oh no, consistency is, it was a stress, quite frankly, when you, you first run for something, you like, you gotta, you like, you gotta get your logo, your name, right. And all that. And because you want it to not, you don't want to, you don't want to change it yeah. moving forward. Cause you know, the year after the year of uh, the slow drip, if you will, of, uh, you know, impressions. Yeah. You want them to get to the point where they see something and just automatically think of you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that's something, um, doing that through any of your marketing efforts. I know there was a couple of questions on the texting, um, that somebody wanted me to go over. So let me go over that. Let me, let me find my here we go. So I showed you how to categorize people, but how you would do our mass texting, and I'll show you the mass texting first, and then I'll go into the individual texting because you can do both. I um, mean, actually, there's a third way you can also set them up on a drip campaign. But for the um, for the bulk texting, where if you just want to text them, like you have um, an open house or you have something, you know, you're wanting them to go out and vote today or whatever it is. Um, whatever part, or if you've got a great loan that your program that you want people to know about, you can type out one message and you can, again, use placeholders. I'm big on placeholders because that personalizes everything. You don't want to just say like, hey, you, or um, whatever. You really, it is, it does make a difference when you're, um, you know, using their name. And then you put in your message in here and you can add a video, you could add an image, you can do all sorts of things in here as well. So let's do um, an image. So um, what does that one say? I'll do this one. No, that's, that's Greece. That's where my dad is from. So, um, so you can put in your image like selling this island. <laughs> That would be awesome, right? So now you can go ahead and send this out to everyone and you've got this picture and you can just send this out to, you know, 250 people at one time with, you know, taking, um, you know, really no time to do that. And it becomes personalized. And then all the responses come back to your mobile device. It's not like, you know, they just go nowhere. I, I certainly don't get them and I don't want them, um, but they'll go back into, you know, back to your mobile device or they'll also um, be in there. Um, contact records so you can look them up so if we go to michael phelps we text him all the time here so i can go to michael phelps and i can send him just an individual message um, again the same thing the same type of options where i can add a video or an image um, this time i can also include his spouse in this um, and send that out we have this i always have to point this out because i think it's so important send yourself a test of the text because you, the worst thing would be sending 250 text messages and you're like, shoot, that's the wrong image or I mistyped this or, oh my goodness, I didn't want to say that. That's the wrong message. So do yourself a favor and use our testing thing. I was I'm big on that. Um, and then when the text messages come back, you could read them here. Um, so anything with a little arrow in front of it, that's the reply. So that's how that would work. Um, and that would, be, um, they, that would be the one spot for it. The other spot would be in the reporting where you wanna see like all of the text messages that you're getting back. So maybe you do have an admin that's logging into your CRM and they, want, you know, they should be responding to those text messages as well. You can do that through the reports here. Um, when this loads, you gotta love live demos. Here we go, is it popping up? So it'll pop up here in a second. And that's where all the, um, 
the text message will, will be coming from so you can reply to them. Um, maybe not. Um, all right, we'll try that later. Um, so that's, um, that's how that works. But then it also comes in on your device, on your mobile device, and you can see the text messages there and, um, and you can get those answered. It looks like, are we, um, I see someone raising their hand. If you have a question, I don't remember, I didn't see his, he stopped raising his hand. But if you have a question, feel free to post that in the chat and Sarah's, um, you know, putting those, um, posting those to us as well. You can also post them in the Q&A section as well, if you have anything else. I know we're coming up on time, um, but Marcus, I'm gonna let you kind of end with any, um, any final parting words to everyone here. No, I think the only thing, and we touched this real briefly that uh, we didn't cover, that we talked about possibly uh, covering was the integration stuff, um, which was really important for me, you know, coming from a, a bunch of different, bringing a bunch of lists together in one yeah. location was, was, uh, was huge. So I think that's one of the features that I really appreciate. Yeah. And I know, I don't know how I forgot to talk about integrations when that's like my, that's my thing. I love doing integrations. I love um, partnering with people. We've got a few um, new ones that are coming up um, in the next couple of months that I think a lot of people are going to be excited about. So um, yeah, but the integrations with like Gmail and Google and Google Calendar, all those things were, um, I love Google apps. It's a, such a great, um, you know, array of different things that you can do really inexpensively. It's like five bucks a month for using a Google apps account. And it really does help with a lot of things. So um, thanks for bringing that up. Um, and I did want to read um, one thing from Nora Ellen. Marcus, she said, Marcus, thank you for doing this webinar and thank you for serving our um, serving our country. I know there are good politicians. You just don't make the national news since they only want to focus on those who aren't. So, um, so thank you for Nora. Well, thank you. And uh, I guess that'll be a segue. I'll, I'll, I'll say this public service announcement, you know, it starts local, uh, you know, people that run for office, um, you know, we've talked a lot on this uh, webinar about, you know, relationship building and, and what have you, you know, um, I tell people all the time, we need to start getting out from behind the keyboards and actually having conversations with one another. Um, you know, somebody that you uh, can agree with 80% of the time is not your enemy. Uh, and, uh, you know, just being nicer to each other. I think that, you know, we kind of dehumanize the situation. And then what happens is, is you got somebody I, like myself, who I, I feel like I got a, I got a great world I'm living in my, I got a great family. I've got a great job. Everything's so good that at some point, if I take enough heat and people are so disrespectful that I go, you know what, what am I doing this for? And then I go home. And somebody that either either doesn't think that way about their lives or doesn't necessarily uh, uh, hold the same character traits, they continue to be elevated, and then we end up with a mess uh, for people uh, representing us. So, just uh, being more open minded and nice, nicer to each other. Well, definitely, uh, kindness goes a long way. Um, it goes and a long way. It does go a long way. So, well, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here and. Um, I know that you get, you're in session um, for the next couple of weeks, next few weeks, I think, right? We are, yep. I just got to Atlanta today, and uh, we, we gavel in at 10 a.m. in the morning, and we hope we, hope we get to go home before Thanksgiving. So. Yes. Well, awesome. Thank you for everything you do. Thanks for being here. Thanks, everyone, for watching today. Um, and then next week on November 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern, um, time. I'm going to be joined by Annette Anthony, who is the VP of Technology with Exit Realty. And she and I are going to be talking about relationship building and how to maintain strong relationships. So um, there's like a common theme here on relationship building and CRM. It's that I always say, tell people that R in the CRM part is like a really important R, just like the one at the end of your name. If you're um, part of the National Association of Realtors, it's that relationship building is, is at the center of everything that you do as realtors. So um, we'll be talking more about relationship building. So thank you so much, Marcus, for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Y'all yeah. have a great day.
All right. Thank you, everyone. Take care.